Hi, what you're about to watch on this video is a portion of a webinar that I did in my private Amazon Facebook group. Uh, we've got over 2000 sellers that are in this Facebook group. And you can find out more about my course and book and all the other stuff that I do at my website at askjimmysmith.com. I just wanted to thank you for checking out the video and let you know that this is a portion of a, a much longer webinar that I've done in the group. So if you have any questions at all, please uh, feel free to leave a comment below or reach out to me at askjimmysmith.com. Thank you so much for being here. And I hope you have a great day. So here's where I'm going to have like a, a caveat. So I'm going to have a little bit of an asterisk that I didn't put on the PowerPoint. Uh, what should you do for 2022 and beyond? Okay. The and beyond is the important piece for some of you. If you are a brand new seller, there are things here that will not apply to you that you should not focus on, right? Because they're going to have, uh, what is it? The law of diminishing returns. You're going to have diminishing returns for you because you're new. You, you should be focused on the basics of finding products, sending them into Amazon, doing that consistently, um, and continuing to move forward. Now, for some of you that have been selling for a while and you're at 20,000, 40,000, 100,000 plus a month, there are some things on here that won't apply to you either, uh, but other things that apply 100% to you that you should be focused on. So um, this is kind of a catch-all and I have a lot of suggestions uh, and hopefully I don't bog you down or take up too much uh, time on these. I'll try to go through these as, as decently uh, explained and as quick as I can. Um, but first off, we need to finish 2021 strong. Yes, 2022 is there. Yes, that's the whole point of this presentation and even the e-commerce opportunity for 2022. But there's still three weeks left, or I guess a full month, right? Left in December. So you need to finish this month strong. Um, and the ways that you do that, first, fulfilled by merchant time, uh, that is now. This is the time to focus. If you've ever focused on Fulfilled by Merchant or if you never have, uh, now is the time to do it because this is when you can make a lot of money on FBM uh, products. So there's plenty of trainings in the Q4 groups that we've done. There's also some in my replens group. I assume that there's uh, some on fulfilling by merchant in, you know, like the My Silent Team group or in PAC. Uh, so make sure to utilize those resources to learn about it if you don't know how, but you want to focus on that now. Uh, this is key that a lot of people forget. You want to keep sending in shipments. I have uh, many people all the time that have said, hey, you know, um, my sales in January were awful. Uh, and it's, and I ask them, well, did you send in any FBA shipments during December? And they're usually like, well, I sent one. Well, that's why, right? You, because you weren't sending in shipments during December. So you need to keep sending in your FBA shipments. Just because it's not guaranteed to show up for Christmas sales doesn't mean you need to stop doing that. So you want to be consistent with sending in those FBA shipments. Um, I do recommend take time off with your family to enjoy the holidays, but be consistent in your normal replen shipment routines. Okay, You don't need to go out and just ignore all of the holidays that are happening right now. You need to be consistent though in your business. So spend time with your family. That's why you do it. This is what the whole point of the business is for. But ultimately, you want to be consistent in your shipment routines because that's what's going to create success in January and February uh, as well for your business. Uh, look for Christmas candy. This is just a tip uh, on heavy clearance after December 25th. Uh, you want to look for some things that are on heavy clearance. So usually Christmas candies, Christmas foods, uh, those things can continue to sell well. This is the perfect timing because it's the coldest part of the year too. So if you send in candy, it's unlikely to, to melt, right? Uh, so I recommend looking at that if you've uh, got the ability and the time to do it. However, you want to make sure that you check Keepa to see how it sells after January 1st. So don't just go out there and see, oh, cool, there's a 75% off sale on all this candy at, at Walgreens and just load up a basket because a lot of it might be awful candy that nobody wants. So uh, make sure that you're checking Keepa with each thing, doing the normal replen process, but taking advantage of the clearance pricing. Um, this is something that you need to remember as well. So be prepared for returns in January but don't be discouraged. A lot of um, newer sellers I, I've seen over the last five, six years, um, and myself included in the first year or two, um, complain about the returns that come in January. However, that's usually for a few different reasons and also, uh, which I'll cover here in a second, but it can be discouraging. And I want to kind of give you some uh, tips on what you can do with that, because many of the returns that you get back should still be sellable. Um, most of the time, you know, you bought a product, you send it in FBA, a parent buys it or somebody buys it as a gift, a person opens a gift and they're like, oh, 
you know, I don't, I don't want this toy, right? Or I already have one of these. And so they just send it back, right? Because it's never been used, never been opened. So a lot of the things should be still sellable. Now, if you get it back and you can't sell it, there's multiple options. But first, look to see if you can send it back into FBA. Second, you can sell it on eBay. Uh, yeah, it might be a different process, but you can sell it uh, on eBay. eBay is still a very valuable platform, and I recommend doing that. You can sell it on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist. You can hold it for a garage sale. Don't just get these things back and throw them out and be all sad because you lost a bunch of money. You can still sell these and many times break even or make profit uh, depending on the product and how it, the condition that it's in. So don't be discouraged by that. And remember that January, at least for us, is typically our second biggest month for sales because we have consistently been sending in those products in December. We didn't take time off from our normal routines. We can continue to send in our typical replens. And so in January, we have an awesome sales month. People are spending their Amazon gift cards. People are buying more products in January. Um, and so that's usually our second biggest month. So we might get a little bit more uh, in returns because people didn't like their Christmas gifts or whatever. But January, we're getting a lot more in sales as well if you were consistent in your sending in of products, right? If you took off the whole month of December, which that's up to you totally fine. You've got freedom to do that in your business. But if you take off the month of December, expect January and the first half of February to not be so great. So just keep that in mind. If you're consistent with the action, it will be a, a good month or at least at the very least an average month for you, right? For us, it's typically our second biggest. Okay. So if you've been selling for three months or more and you've got replans that maybe you forgot about, you want to take the time to go through your old replans because it's very easy um, to forget about some of these replenishable products, right? You're spending time in Q4, you're buying it, buying all the, the holiday products, you're buying all the Christmas stuff, you're making, you're sending in FBM products and you forget about your old stable replens that are now a little stale, right? And so I highly recommend going back through your list of replens, reevaluating all of them, um, at least all of them that look decent, right? You can usually tell off the just normal selling price if it looks at least worth taking a check on Keepa. Um, so go through all of your old replens to see if any of them are viable again. And then make a list. If you can do this now, great, but make a list so you can send them into FBA, FBA now. If you don't do this now, then definitely do it at the beginning of the year. The reason I recommend doing it now, if possible, if you've got the time, is because a lot of sellers forget about their replans in Q4 and they're just focused on Christmas stuff or holiday, you know, different, uh, there's a bunch of holidays and stuff in, in December. So they're focused on all of that and New Year's products. So uh, make sure that if you can send them in now, do it because you're going to get a lot of sales that other sellers forgot about. Um, and it's it can be a lot of times even more profitable than a typical, you know, June or something that you were regularly sending these in on. And then, oh yeah, I already mentioned that. It is way easier to buy old products that are good again than to find new ones. So always keep that in mind. Your old products, if you can go back through them, reevaluate them, way easier to do that than it is to go out and find a new one, stand in the aisle, get yourself prepared for it. Um, you know, So take the time once a quarter, even throughout the year to go back through some of your old products and see if they are viable again. Um, this one's obvious. For 2022, continue to build up your replens list with new ones. Um, and I recommend, uh, it's up to you. I know Oscar said he hated doing the pictures whenever I was watching his uh, presentation. Um, but if if you don't like being in the aisles, if you hate standing in the aisles, just go take pictures or pay a, a local you know high school kid to take pictures of aisles for you. And then you don't even have to go to the store until you buy the products, but have them take pictures in stores so you can um, evaluate them at home or go out and stand in the aisles like uh, you know we did for the longest time. Uh, try some new OA stores. I recommend doing that. You, you want to be diversifying your suppliers. As I mentioned earlier with the supply chain issue, try to diversify those suppliers so that if there are issues with a particular supplier, you have multiple other uh, suppliers to go to. Expand your skill set um, with replens. Uh, so if you are, you know, just focused on some of the most basics of Keepa and you've been selling for a while, you've got it down, you know Keepa really well, start expanding your skill set and look into maybe the Keepa product finder, uh, look into some of those other software programs, but only if you have essentially mastered the uh, regular Keepa data, the regular charts. If you can go, you can look at a Keepa chart and in under five seconds, evaluate if you should buy it or not. 
So that's when you should start expanding your skill set to look at some new, uh, to help you find new replens uh, for your list. So this one is the more advanced stuff. Now you can do it early on. Um, and so that's why I said some of this will apply to new sellers, some won't. It's kind of up to you. Um, I do recommend if you plan to make this a bigger business uh, that's going to uh, extend beyond yourself where you're bringing in employees or independent contractors, you're bringing in team members, then you should in 2022, not right now, uh, but in 2022, start thinking about uh, building your standard operating procedures. And I'll try to break down just some quick tips on that because I go through it in the course for replens. I also go through it in the book, um, Side Hustle to Full-Time Income. So there's a lot of different things um, you know, that, that can go into this, but I'll give you some quick tips. So essentially, I don't want you to sit down and be like, all right, cool. I need to figure out uh, my process for a repricer. You know, I'm going to take the time. I'm just going to figure this out. Or I don't want you to go around and say, okay, what's my prep and ship process for clothing and shoes? Or what's, how do I find a replan? Essentially what you want to do is just document the process as you do it. Uh, you don't need to take extra time um, for most of these procedures. You can just sit down, start OA sourcing or whatever it is, and you can turn on a screen recorder and record yourself doing it. Talk through it. I don't care if you don't like your voice. It's not about posting it to the internet. It's about creating a procedure. So start with a video. Um, if you need to prep a certain replan, just turn on a camera. You don't even have to show your face. Have someone hold it. And you're like, all right, cool. I'm going to prep this breakable product. All right. I need to get this bubble wrap and this is how much I get. And I put it on here and I tape it. And then I get a poly bag. I put that around it. You know, you just talk through that process with the video camera on there. And then eventually they can be turned into written procedures for your business. So it's going to make it tremendously easier if you do outsource that in the future. Um, and that's what you're going to create those systems from. Now, uh, I want to add one more thing to that before we get to the outsourcing, but video to written, you don't even have to be the one to write it later. You could eventually send that to a virtual assistant, uh, somebody that you get on Fiverr or someone that you get you know, from Ryan's VA service or wherever it might be that will take that video, they'll transcribe the whole thing, they'll write it out and they'll take screenshots of each little thing, right? They'll take screenshots of the product, they'll take screenshots of the bubble wrap going on the product, screenshots shots of the uh, poly bag. And, and they can take those screenshots and make it into a nice PDF for you. And you can do, you know, 90% of the work will be done and you can just edit it to, you know, for little mistakes later, right? Because having those written ones make them easier. If a process changes with uh, how you do something, you don't have to re-record a video. It's a lot easier to delete a sentence out of a written PDF uh, and just add in a new one than it is to re-record a video and then have to write it later. So keep that in mind. I know it's going to be a little over your head if you're brand new, but if you have been doing this for a little bit, you're at five, ten thousand dollars a month in sales, um, or even a little bit less, you can start doing this process because it's it doesn't take much extra time uh, to do this. Now begin outsourcing. Um, so this is just kind of an overview of different things you can outsource. Uh, I don't think that you, that all of you that are out there today should be hiring employees or independent contractors. However. If you don't have any software programs, right, uh, then that's one way to outsource. If you don't have a virtual assistant, that's a way to outsource service providers for bookkeeping, taxes, et cetera. All of these things are different ways to outsource. So you don't have to complicate it. Again, this is for what should you do for 2022 and beyond. This isn't what you have to do in January. Keep that in mind, but make a plan to implement new software if needed, right? So replendashboard.com, I've got my, my shameless plug here, my shirt and everything, replendashboard.com, I recommend for uh, managing your inventory, a repricer. Um, there's a ton of great options out there for repricing. If you don't have a repricer, you should look into one. If you've got over a hundred SKUs that you're selling, inventory lab for speeding up shipments, so many different software programs out there that you can outsource and it will save you hours upon hours of time. Uh, and that's really the, the plan. That's the whole point of it. So start looking into that. Additionally, there's proven replensva.com, that whole, uh, that new trained VA service that, uh, you know, the, the team has put out so they can help you find new replens. So if you're looking for a VA and you don't have time to train one, you can go to that service to help you uh, with that. Or you can find another VA service that you can work with and you do a little bit more work to train that VA yourself. So start looking at VAs. And then from a service provider standpoint, Maybe it's a prep center that you could outsource to. Maybe it's an accountant or bookkeeper, um, landscaping or lawn care. Uh, it costs 40 bucks for our lawn to, or 30, 30 or 35 bucks for a lawn to get mowed. That saves me an hour of time and a bunch of money and gas and making sure that the lawnmowers winterize and doesn't break down. Like 
get service providers for the most basic tasks that you do each and every day. Um, you can find ones for Amazon listing creation, uh, tons of different service providers out there that you can utilize. Uh, you can even have ones that do your groceries, right? <laughs> They'll go shipped, right? Many grocery stores now ship your groceries to you. So why are you going to a grocery store? Uh, look for service providers that can save you time that then you can place into your business or put, uh, put towards your family. All right. Here's another thing you can do in 2022 uh, or beyond is build relationships with store managers. Uh, you know, I know Jim and Ryan talked about a couple of different examples, I think in the panel before Oscar. Uh, so I recommend trying to build relationships with those store managers. They can help you buy in bulk. Uh, they can ultimately help you profit more and you can create a win-win relationship with them. Um, and they can help you find new opportunities. Maybe they've got a catalog of products they don't even stock, but you realize, oh, I could order a hundred of these and sell a bunch of them. So they can help you find those new opportunities opportunities. That's pretty, um, it's simple to do. It's not easy because it's hard to go up and talk to somebody that you don't know, especially if they're a manager, but it might give you a good opportunity to order in bulk and create a good uh, partnership. Um, if new products, if new products come out that they know about, that's also how they can help you find new opportunities. So maybe something, some new product line is coming out and they say, Hey, this, this thing's new. We expect it to be popular. Do you want to buy some as well? then uh, it might be a good opportunity for you if you can see it on uh, Amazon or if you're willing to make the listing on Amazon. Uh, if you're working with smaller stores, they're typically going to love the partnership more, right? Uh, you can't really partner up with Walmart or Target, but if you're working with regional or uh, local stores, that's when you can uh, really build relationships. And then again, look into regional, local, or niche stores for replants. Not everyone has to buy from Walmart, okay? I know we get a lot of people that buy products from Walmart. We buy products from Walmart, uh, but you can look into multiple stores. So regional, local, or niche stores are all great for replants. Um, it helps you with building relationships. Uh, and I just gave a little bit more clarity to what that means. So grocery products, regional typically is a grocery store. Sometimes you'll have local grocers like... Um, you know, uh, a Mexican food store, an Asian food store, or something like that, right? Um, you've got local grocers like that. Specialty stores that would probably fall under it, but there's music stores, there's sporting goods stores, there are office supply stores, there's arts and crafts stores, there's all these different things that are niches that you've got opportunities from a replens perspective to have a lot less competition if you really get into those niches. They might be harder to find uh, at replens, but they're going to be a lot less uh, competitive typically as well. Okay. And then look for wholesale opportunities. I'm pretty sure this is the last slide for different opportunities of 2022. Uh, but look at your existing replan base. As I mentioned at the beginning of this with Ryan, that um, that's how I recommended it in the course is look at your existing replans. And then you can move forward from there because ultimately um, you've got so much data on different products that sell well. That's where the majority of our uh, yeah, the majority of our wholesale products have come from our existing replens that we had, and they became exclusive wholesales, uh, wholesale relationships for us. So um, look at those replens that you're currently selling to see what you can um, you know, just do from a wholesale perspective. So check out your top sellers, and then you can contact the brand or search for a distributor or wholesaler for that brand. So if you're looking at your top sellers, especially if they're hard to keep in stock, um, or maybe a supplier that you're buying it from, a store you're buying it from no longer is, is selling that, we'll take that as an opportunity to contact the brand. And if the brand uh, refers you out to a distributor or a wholesaler, that's fine. It's going to be a little bit more marked up. But if you can work with either of those, it's still going to be better than not having that as a wholesale product. And then I recommend in 2022, make a list of just the top 10 to contact. You don't have to overwhelm yourself. Uh, just make a list of 10 of your best replens that you can contact for wholesale opportunities uh, because that's going to push you forward. Make one call a week for 10 weeks or make one call a day for 10 days. Not very difficult uh, to do that. And so it, it will help you tremendously. Even if you get one or two or you get none of them, you're still learning, you're still trying, and it's better to, to work towards the wholesale process than to do nothing. And also using Rich Potter, which Rich Potter's course, uh, provenholesourcing.com, um, I believe is the, the link for that. So uh, he's got an amazing method. Uh, obviously, I, if you haven't watched his presentation uh, from this conference, I highly recommend doing that. Um, his is way above and beyond what I'm recommending with your existing replens, uh, but there's so much uh, 
to be gained from that course and, and his knowledge. So recommend that. Hey, thank you okay. so much for checking out this video. Be sure to leave a comment below with any thoughts or questions you might have, and I'll make sure to respond to as many of them as I can. And while you're at it, if you found value in this video, uh, hit the like button and also subscribe to this channel uh, and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified of any new videos that I put out uh, on this channel. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about uh, the content that I provide, I'd really appreciate that. That would help me out so that more people can get to this channel and get the content out uh, further. And lastly, make sure to visit my website, askjimmysmith.com. You can check out all of my content and get a bunch of different free resources that I have available to you on askjimmysmith.com. I really appreciate your time and the time that you took to watch this video. And I look forward to serving you in any way that I can in the future. Thank you and have a blessed day.